so much can happen in an hour. In one hour, 3,480 airplanes will be taking off all over the world. 6,960 people will have gotten married. And in an hour from now, 15,000 babies will be born. And in an hour from now, 11 adults in the UK would have been sexually abused, assaulted and raped. Welcome to The Chrissy B Show, the UK's only TV programme that's dedicated to your mental health and well-being. It's Sexual Abuse and Violence Awareness Week and today we are voicing the trauma of those that have suffered from sexual abuse all over the world. Explaining the psychology of surviving sexual abuse is our resident psychologist, Dr. Audrey Tang. We will also show you a video courtesy of the Mental Health Channel on how one young man worked through a lifetime of issues received after a terrible instance of rape and got the closure he needed to move on. As we know, nutrition plays an important role in our well-being, so nutritionist Severi Menem gives us a recipe you can make to improve your mood, as well as fitness, which can be beneficial for the healing process. So we have fitness expert Fadja Jede. Newsreader Helena Shard gives us the latest in feel-good and positive news, and at the end of the show, I'll be sharing some things to say and what not to say to a victim of sexual assault. Now, abuse of all kinds isn't spoken about enough, but abuse of a sexual nature is a taboo subject with devastating facts. According to Rape Crisis, one in five women aged 16 to 59 have experienced some form of sexual violence since the age of 16, and only around 15% of those who experience sexual violence choose to report it to the police. Sexual abuse and violence leaves more than just physical harm and trauma, with a study from the Psychological Medicine stating 40% of women surveyed with severe mental illness had suffered rape or attempted rape in adulthood, of whom 53% had attempted suicide as a result. But what are your opinions on these facts? We asked Twitter to find out. Laura says, if we're not talking about different forms of violence from the seemingly most innocuous to the most blatantly violent, then we'll never disrupt rape culture. Kat addresses a crucial point about consent. In my teens, I literally said to my boyfriend, I'm telling you no. He replied, yes, but I'm trying to change your mind. I decided it was easy to say yes than to keep resisting. It wasn't rape, but it wasn't a good experience. I thought since I'd said yes, it was fine. Luke says, Simone Biles, the amazing, iconic Olympic gymnast who's known for achieving so much at the 2016 Olympics and for her bubbly personality, is also a victim of sexual assault. Stop defending abusers. Support and respect victims and actively find ways to fight rape culture. Anissa states, I'm a victim. I'm a victim of rape, a victim of genocide and more, a victim of domestic abuse, a victim of cancer. I survived all of those things and I'm strong, independent, wild and empowered. But the systems that cause my victimhood still exist and are still to blame, not me. Kelly gives us a definition of consent. The absence of a clear no is not a yes. That is not consent. And sex without consent is rape. So some very interesting thoughts on sexual violence there. So what does our resident psychologist, Dr. Audrey Tang, have to say about the mental implications of sexual abuse? Well, here she is. Welcome to the show, Audrey. Thanks for having me, Chrissy. It's a difficult topic that we are tackling today. It is. And obviously is in the media now, you know, mm. recently as well. So it's something yeah. that we needed to, to speak about. Very important. So, of yes. course, you are going to be talking about it, which is really important. Yes. And what's what I love about this show. It's it's so, it's unafraid. Yes. To address this. Definitely. So, the first question, what actually happens mentally to someone that does go through this kind of sexual violence? It's can be a number of things um, because it's a feeling of complete powerlessness in many ways. So mm -hmm. it's that feeling that you've just lost control. You're not in control of anything anymore. Something has happened which has absolutely violated you. And yeah. that's a very frightening place to be. For a man, it can be very emasculating as mm -hmm. well. Um, so that loss of control is, is a real issue that a lot of people have to manage and deal yeah. with. And that's something that we can do to help give that person that control back. Um, there can be very complex feelings, guilt sometimes, confusion. Mm. Was it me? Was I being oversensitive? Did that actually happen? That's yeah. a fear that people can mm. have. Will anyone believe me? And it can get even worse when you take somebody's culture into account, mm. um, somebody's age, 
how much someone understands about what's happened to them as well, whether this is a realization that something's been going on for a very long time that they hadn't realized. Mm -hmm. So all of those things really go to, to making life incredibly difficult once you've experienced something as, mm. as horrendous as that. So Audrey, in terms of the kind of help that a victim should, um, should see? Well, one of the most important ways I, I think is actually taking a leaf out of um, psychological first aid. So this is a method uh, supported by the World Health Organization for mm. supporting people in uh, traumatic situations. They do say it's, it's war zones and so on, but I think this is quite relevant here. Yeah. And the first thing is to remember that that person needs to be in a safe environment, which means that don't make promises that you can't keep. Mm -hmm. Don't misuse the trust they've placed in you. So if they've said, I'm not ready to go and speak to somebody about this, don't go and make an appointment behind their okay. back because yeah. that's really violating them mm -hmm. once again. again yeah. um, the second thing is giving them back the control, giving them back the dignity that they mm -hmm. had. So again, it's about respecting their decisions. Whatever biases, whatever judgments we may have, we've got to remember that it's their choices, it's their decisions, we need to respect that because it's all part of giving that power back to yeah. them again. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that we also need to be mindful of when it comes to the creating that safe environment is if we are a very tactile person, they may not respond well to touch, yeah. to hugs, and also culture can come back into this as well. So again, it depends on how the culture sees abuse too and what the repercussions are from that. It can depend on the age of the person. Mm -hmm. Lots of people will have different approaches, different ways of needing to deal with it. So again, it's about respecting that. And of course, the last thing of the three points is being safe, a safe environment, giving back dignity. The last thing is um, knowing their responsibilities and their rights as well. So it's things like, well, actually, you may have to go to the police. Where you can help is saying, I will go with you. Not, mm -hmm. I'm forcing you to do it. We must do it right now. But yeah. it's, that's the support you can, you can give them. Okay. Don't try and counsel them yourself unless you're a trained professional because you can end up saying something that you don't mean and you can be meaning to be as helpful and as kind as possible, but oh, something might come out of your mouth that yeah. just isn't helpful. Mm -hmm. Because also you need to remember that just because you might want support in a certain way, it doesn't mean they want support mm. in a certain way. This is again, I'm glad you brought up men then, the difference between men and women. A lot of women like to talk and need to talk. Men really don't. Mm. So trying to get a man to open up and talk may not be the best thing, but to maybe get him involved in doing something or, okay. and then chatting in that way, that can help too. Um, be there to listen as well. Mm. That can be really helpful and just listen. Don't probe because what people are doing is they're sharing something that is incredibly mm. personal. They are offering you so much of their trust and so much of a very sensitive thing. Uh, to keep probing is very difficult. So uh, paraphrasing can help. So just repeating the last thing they've said, don't add, don't okay. try and get yeah. any more information. And also, of course, respect their privacy. Don't go telling other people, even if you're saying oh, things well, like, oh, yeah, I haven't left, I've left their name out, I haven't mentioned anything, or it's just someone I work with. Just don't, don't yeah. just don't mm -hmm. even do that. Um, when I say it, 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 don't tell people, of course, if it is something you're worried about their safety for their, their own selves or that you're worried about safety for another person, then you have to go through the proper channels, yeah. speak to mm -hmm. somebody that you trust and speak to a professional that you trust. But this is not gossip. Someone hasn't trusted mm. you with something very, very important. This is not gossip. Another thing is actually going back to the biases. Um, don't ask questions like, you know, could you have done something about it? Why mm. haven't you done? Or even why haven't you told me this before? Mm -hmm. Because again, that's making the blame even worse. Okay. So it's be there to listen. Remember, it's all about giving the dignity back. And sometimes it may be the best support you can do is bringing that person to the police or accompanying them to a counsellor or whatever yeah. it is they yeah. need, but respect their decisions and praise them for being courageous for speaking up. Brilliant. Audrey, thank you so much for some great Pleasure. advice there. Thank you. And we'll see you again next time. Yes, thank lovely. you. So I experienced mental health, um, my first experience of mental health, I was very young actually, I was nine years old, and I remember experiencing this kind of distorted view that everybody and anybody around me was out to cause me harm. Now, it kind of was triggered by the fact that I was abused as a child by a, in inverted commas, so-called family friend. Um, but my mind became very polluted with very kind of distorted thoughts, I mean, 
some of it might have been slightly child dreamlike, but I used to believe that when I went to sleep, people would turn into these kind of skeletal creatures. But I also had this true belief that everybody was going to kill me because of, obviously, I'd had this abuse going on and it had been very much apparent from the individual that they were going to kill me or my family if I ever spoke out. You know, it was somebody that I loved, somebody I trusted. He'd groomed the whole family for two years before he ever didn't think this is what they do. They're very clever and sophisticated. And I just remember the first time it happened, I woke up in the darkness of the night and all of a sudden, I didn't know who was there. I could just feel the hands and I could feel the breathing and I just froze. I didn't know what to do. And it just, that's where I think I learned a response of anxiety because I, I don't even know how you can quantify it to somebody who's never experienced. But if you all of a sudden, you know if somebody shouts at somebody and it kind of shocks them, it's like that. I just froze, didn't know who it was, didn't know what was going on, and I was just there. And then eventually the person exited the room, and then I just kind of almost, I, th I think I'd almost gone off somewhere. So there's a thing called disassociation, and I think my mind had learned to somehow, in that frozen moment, go somewhere whilst it went on. You know, for many years, I hated anybody questioning who I was. I, I mean, I have no photos of my childhood. Um, I only have photos now as an adult because I couldn't bear to look at myself. They diagnosed me with body dysmorphic disorder. I, I went and saw about 15 different cosmetic surgeons. I wanted to completely change the way I looked. Thankfully, no cosmetic surgeon would touch me with a barge pole because they could clearly see what was going on. This wasn't just somebody who wanted to kind of improve their look. This was somebody who wanted to, if I could have changed my face completely, I would have at that point. I became my own abuser. I started to abuse myself. It had become what my brain had learned. As uncomfortable as it was, it was more normal to be cruel to myself. So I used to punch myself in the face. I used to do all sorts of things. You know, and this is where I think sometimes we need to educate people around Sometimes, and I'm not excusing bad behaviour, but you know, I used to go out when I was in my 18, 19 sort of years of age and incite a physical violent attack on me. So I'd take on, little old me would take on five bouncers. There's no way I was going to win, but it was almost reinforcing when I got abused. That's what, yeah, it's because I'm not good enough and that's what I'm there for. Even though I'd kind of gone out and seeked that approval, it reinforced that actually I'm a nasty person inside. And that stayed with me from the age of eight till I was 30. So, you know, any form of abuse, whether it's sexual or any form of abuse whatsoever, when somebody's conditioned a certain way and it's sustained over many, many years, and for mine it was eight years, it becomes a belief and you become brainwashed and that's what happened. And the therapeutic intervention allowed me to understand the chain analysis. Okay, where did this start? What's gone on? And what's driving it? And what was driving it was anxiety, but also fear. Anybody that's watching this and is experienced similar to what I've experienced or is experiencing it right now, if I was to talk to my younger self, I would speak up. I would find that one person that I trusted that had my best interests at heart and I would ask for help. Because I truly believe, had I seen somebody like myself talking when I was 13 years old and making me realise that actually what I'm going through is perfectly normal, for what I've gone through, then I probably wouldn't have got to the stage where I had to try and kill myself. Well, don't go away because after the break, we show you a moving tale courtesy of the mental health channel of a boy who worked past his sexual trauma and is ready to face the world. And Helena Shard updates us on the latest in Feel Good News. But first, of the estimated 78,000 people in the UK who are victims of rape per year, how many victims are men? Is it A, 2,000, B, 5,000, or C, 9,000? Find out the answer after this break. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show, everyone. Now, before the break, we asked you of the estimated 78,000 people in the UK who are victims of rape every year, how many victims are men? Is it A, 2,000, B, 5,000, or C, 9,000? According to The Telegraph, the answer is C. An unfortunate 9,000 men are raped per year, with only 1,250 rapes being reported to the police per year. Now, sexual trauma can take years to move past, but it is possible to live a life after abuse. Here, Wilson talks about how he got help and moved on after being assaulted as a child. In this video, courtesy of the Mental Health Channel. I 
had hoped for one day that I could be comfortable with myself. The idea of a fugue is a melody that is twisted and turned on top of itself and having what starts as a very clear melody and then being complicated over and over and then again resolved into a very clear melody is very much symbolic of the journey we've gone through. One of the things that's been most important to me is, is to be a good dad. And I wanted to be a, a good enough dad not to have to need help. And the realization that I was beyond what I could do was hard. 12 years ago, my mother's boyfriend raped me in his bathroom. I was four. Going to therapy, I had no clue what to expect, so I did have some reluctancy. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good Hi. to see you, Andrew. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. All right. We'll see you in a little bit. What happened to you when you were a kid is one of the great fears of parents and can ruin somebody's life to, to right. have had some sort of abuse happen in childhood. When a child experiences trauma, there's emotional material that gets trapped in the system. So any sort of stressful situation that comes up can easily trigger those emotions again. So the, the anger and the confusion can be triggered by something like not being prepared for a test. School was going down and couldn't sleep, couldn't function really. Our emotional system is a guidance system. And so that's your emotional system telling you, hey, there's something in here that needs to be cleared there's up. There's something wrong. After a year of therapy, today I have my last therapy session and now I can use the tools that I've learned to go out into the world on my own. Your dad told me that uh, you, you feel like you're kind of ready to, to move on from the yeah. counseling. It's now time for me to go on with myself and go out into my life and see what there is for me to see. I'm not the one who healed Wilson, right? Wilson's the one who healed Wilson. I created the, the avenue for that to happen. You all fixed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much it's, for your help. It's been great working with you guys, man. As well. I've, I've enjoyed it and uh, I, I'm expecting big things from you. <laughs> No, me too. Yeah. Well, you've been a bomb. Uh, you're a hell of a dad too. Thank you. <laughs> He's yeah. all right. Well, he's all right. <laughs> Today's session was good. It, I got a lot of closure and it was, it felt very final and I'm on my way now. Bye, dude. Bye. Love you. I work at this Japanese sushi bar. I clean tables and sort dishes. When I grow up, I would like to work as a therapist and help people to create success stories like I have. I had hoped for one day that I could be comfortable with myself. And you are? Yes. <laughs> to see what I can do.
Thanks very much to the Mental Health Channel for that video. And if you'd like to know more about them, please do head over to our website, chrissybisha.tv and click on our contributors section. So now here to give us the latest in positive news and lift our spirits a little is our very own Helena Shard. Welcome to the show, Helena. Thank you, Chrissy. So a difficult topic that we're covering today, but yes. you do have some news for us. That yeah, will... absolutely. Really oh. interesting doing all the research. Mm. Anyway, so starting off with Paul Connolly, and he was a young man that was on your show. And yes. he's one person I remember out of all the years. I remember lots, obviously, but yeah, it really stands out. he was amazing, out. wasn't he? So really, really good. And talked about, you know, turning his life around. Mm -hmm. and. Now his story is set for TV, so yes, I thought I'd mention yep. it. So just a little bit about him, He's, he, he was illiterate till 25, his book's out against all odds. Mm. That's obviously been made hopefully into a TV docudrama because Endemol and BBC have contacted him. But the great yep. thing about him, without saying too much, is that he was violence free from mm. 2003 and that was thanks to his wife and yeah, children. Yeah. So great, really empowering. Mm -hmm. And I follow his story, so which is really good. You guys, if you want to um, watch the interview with him, actually, it's on our YouTube channel. Just search Paul Connolly and our YouTube channel's Chrissy B Show. It's yeah, really, really a good really interview for you to, to watch. Yeah. Um, I, have, I feel there's a real sort of change in the air mm -hmm. um, in that, I mean, one, it's Year of the Woman, but I feel that people are talking out more if they're not happy yeah. um, about things. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's quite incredible over a short period of time how things have changed. Um, and looking into marry or rapist laws, which were quite shocking, um, some countries still have it in force, which allows rapists to, if they marry the person they rape, they can get off scot-free. Mm. Anyway, so lots of people have been petitioning and women have been like pushing to, to yeah. get rid of the laws and it's working, oh, which is fabulous right. news. Um, and women, the, the, sorry, the places recently are Lebanon, Jordan and Tunisia okay. who've overpowered the laws, yeah, which is yeah, great, but great. still countries have got it in force, which wow. is just incredible, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Completely. And, and it's that actually once, it, even though they've been raped, it's then their duty to protect the family because it's all to do with shame and stigma it's that we've discussed terrible, isn't before. It? It's just so sad. I don't know what these women go through. It is incredible, but it's so great that, that people are campaigning yes. and it is overthrowing. Yeah. But, you know, still Philippines and Latin American countries and things mm. to go, so I'm following that. Very interesting. Um, really happy to hear that Apple, CEO of Apple, is partnering with Malala Yousafzai. I always get that name, it's so hard. Um, Say Malala, people know she uh, Yeah, Malala, um, <laughs> to educate 100,000 girls. Okay. So Apple's CEO, Tim Cook, is joining the, the actual fund and mm -hmm. leadership council. And they always take up things which are, are not achievable, in a sense. That's what Apple does. So it's, it's a great... A collaboration because all the all these girls in secondary school now have got a, a huge chance to yeah. do what they want to do and as Malala says my dream is for every girl to choose her own future and to learn and lead without fear mm -hmm. and again that's changing yeah. you mm -hmm. know more education people saying what they want and they won't put up with certain things so I think that's fantastic yeah. really great Excellent. Um, women have launched the independent Hollywood project, we've heard about it, it's been going for a while, Time's Up campaign, um, and that's to fight sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. um, really that's to do with the producer Harvey Weinstein, won't go into it too much. So more than 300 actresses have collaborated and they've raised a huge amount of money. They've made, I think they had like 15 million amount and they've actually, mm -hmm. re re that money has been raised, is that right? Risen, yeah. raised. <laughs> um, but it's, it's unified that, you know, fighting for change. But that's also is for, for men and for women yes. who have been sexually mm -hmm. abused. And it's really for people that don't have the money to pay to take people yeah. to court. It's amazing how everything's just coming out now, isn't it? It just, is. That's right. It's such a, just a wave, it's a wave of, a of it. Yeah. But it's, I mean, every day there's something mm -hmm. else, which I think it's, everyone's a little bit uncertain, but I think it will turn around. There's a lot of scared be, yeah. abusers out there yeah. who like just thought it would never Absolutely. Come out and now and actually talking. moving on, interestingly now, to um, Rebecca Hall, who starred recent, uh, in, in the film that's coming out, one of Woody Allen's films that's coming mm -hmm. out shortly, um, A Rainy Day in New York. She's actually donated her whole fee 
two Times Up campaign and she's really? regretted mm. doing the film with him, as has a male counterpart as well. The reason being is Dylan Farrow, who's Woody Allen's adopted daughter, tried to take him to court years ago mm -hmm. for sexual abuse when she was seven, I think it was. And no one seven. believed her. Yeah. Wow. No one believed her, it was swept under the carpet. And obviously with the new influx of people coming forward, yeah. she's, she's speaking out again. Um, and she's saying, all I can do is speak my truth. Um, okay. And I actually said, I mean, you know, who am I? But I do believe her because mm -hmm. if you think about it, he actually married one of his other stepdaughters who was very, very young. Mm -hmm. And you just wouldn't do that. Mm -mm. Anyway, that's, well, that's a long yeah. story in itself. But yeah, so there we go, Woody Allen. Um, there is an exhibition at the moment uh, running in Brussels and it's called Is It My Fault? Now this is all to do with raising awareness um, and it's promoting awareness about sexual violence and it represents people who've been assaulted okay. and they replicate the clothing they wore on that day and also there's a, set, a little oh, paragraph wow. written about what happened to them. Yeah. So from little babies to police officers, I mean it's just incredible but it's wow. quite a powerful Thing to see but again you had talking about it and raising yeah. awareness is, is you know a good thing good thing to moving on we haven't got much time but just quickly something which is quite worrying but hopefully dame julie waters is 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 taking charge and has gone to speak to theresa may about it they're talking about um removing ref refuges from the welfare system so that people won't be able to pay for their stay using housing benefit and that could be absolutely catastrophic mm -hmm. So Julie Waters is stood in saying to Theresa May, you know, you've really got to do something here because this could cause lots of deaths by doing that. And because obviously these yeah. refugees are just vital, yeah. absolutely vital. Um, so that's a good thing. I mean, one woman was talking about how it absolutely saved her life. Mm -hmm. And not only that, she had um, mental health counselling. She had access okay, to lots of yeah. things. So it was really okay. positive. I've got to see what so happens many more that. stories, Chrissy. It was such an interesting <laughs> topic. Time, my love. Have. Thank you so much, though. And thanks You're for welcome. telling us about all the things that are happening and yeah. progress. Being it is made. progress, yeah, isn't it? Definitely. Which is really empowering. That's great. It's exciting. And we'll see you again next time. Thank you, absolutely. Thank you. Well, everyone, don't go away because after the break, we talk to Severin Menem on how to eat well during emotionally tough times. And she shows us a quick and easy nutritious recipe and also answers your nutritional questions, including this one. I'm trying to be more skin healthy and want to know which foods are best for my skin. I know nuts are supposed to be very good, but I'm allergic. Is there anything you would recommend? Find out what Severin has to say on this after this break. CB and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10 p.m. on my channel Sky203. Visit ChrissyBshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back to The Chrissy B Show, everyone, the TV program that loves to look after your mental health and well-being. So as you know, we've been speaking about quite a difficult topic today. And of course, nutrition does a lot in lifting our mood, good nutrition that is. And we have our lovely resident nutritionist, Severine Menemon, to give us a lovely recipe and answer some of your questions. So welcome back to the show, Severine. Hi, Chrissy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. So obviously, I love having you on because I thank love you. hearing about all the lovely things you say to us, but also because of the recipes that you produce. Yeah. Yes. What are we doing today? I'm very excited. Today is one of my favorite desserts because okay. there is chocolate and because it's very quick and easy to make. Okay. So, um, only four ingredients. Um, there is yogurt, yeah. uh, cocoa powder, chia seeds and uh, raspberry. It can be white chia seeds or black chia seeds, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So, I've um, picked this recipe because it really helps with uh, mental health mm. to relax and get oh, better. Okay. So, so the reason for that, um, dairy and yogurt in particular has um, contained some L-tryptophan, which is an amino acid that helps produce the melatonin you know, okay. the hormones of sleep. Mm -hmm. So if you have dairy in the evening before going to bed, you tend to sleep better. Oh, I didn't know that. So okay. that's, that's why it's always good to have some dairy in the evening or yeah. some uh, milk, warm milk with honey, okay. something like that. I know you love honey. 
I do. <laughs> I love everything, remember? <laughs> yes, I do remember. <laughs> um, so chia seed is good because it's full of omega-3 mm -hmm. and omega-3 is really good for inflammation and for mental health in general. Okay, that's good. And know. also full of fiber, so it keeps you full and helps the bowel movement. So mm -hmm. for me, it's a superfood. Yeah. So you just put that in here and then we've got roca copada and raspberries and they're very good because they're two antioxidants okay uh, this one is for the it's phyto phytonutrients in tank and this one for vitamin c and the thing is when you have stress um, happening to you in real life often the body takes it and transforms it into oxidative stress which means that your body ages a lot more quicker oh Oh, so that's why it sounds good. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. sound good, but at the same time, it's not as bad as it sounds because by eating antioxidants, mainly fruit and vegetable, you can really slow down oh. the issue. See? Got the solution there already. That was brilliant. Yes. Okay. So that's why we're having cocoa powder and okay. raspberry. So um, I'm just going to mix that together. Ideally, you need to prepare that um, a few hours or the day before you're going to eat it because when the chia seed are with the, um, the yogurt or some people they like it a bit more runny so they use milk um, it absorbs the most and it just sw swells up yeah okay and um, I would say if you, your digestion is not that great what you could do as well is use a mixer so that you just like completely um, um, completely like melt it down. Yeah, melt it down yeah. so that you know everything, all the nutrients from the chia seed are absorbed immediately. Okay. So you can make it as chocolatey as you want. And as you will have noticed, there is absolutely no sugar in this recipe. Yeah, really good. So it's either because you like it like that or because there is already sugar in, in the cocoa powder, it depends. But if you want it a bit sugary without adding the sugar, you can just add some uh, vanilla extract or some cinnamon. Cinnamon will be nice. Or you can have, add honey or agave sugar, you know, mm -hmm. you, can, you can do whatever you feel like in terms of okay. uh, sweetness. Um, I would not recommend sugar, white sugar, because right. we've got like, much healthier options. Okay. So when, once you've nicely mixed that, um, what I like to do is to put it in, in a in a, in a glass container because it's transparent and it's very nice mm -hmm. and I just do layers. Oh, okay. So I, I think it's very important to have nice looking food. So it's not very easy because it's quite narrow at the top, but it's not impossible. Yeah. And as I say, when you leave it in the, in the fridge for a few, uh, a few hours, it will thicken. So that would be easier. And uh, the reason I'm, I'm using such a small container is like I used to, I love having a lead and being able to take it anywhere with okay, me. Okay, yeah, good idea. That's why. So I just um, recycle what, you know, what was in there. Um, yeah. Most likely some kind of a nut butter. Yes, the healthy options. Yes, yes very good. Lots of options. So. Sorry, because I never thought of actually mixing cocoa powder or cacao in yogurt. I, I do in smoothies and stuff with milk. But mm -hmm. This is something I, you know, definitely doing at home yes okay so that looks pretty already yeah it looks pretty but not as pretty as I expected <laughs> but it yeah, does take excellent yeah. I mean the the combination of um, chocolate or cocoa with uh, red berries is usually amazing I mean it's yeah. one of my favorites would you recommend actually leaving this to set first before you put it in your jar or, or um, is it okay to set like this well it depends if, if you set it like this yeah. Then, well, you can do both actually. Yeah, okay. I like to do it this way, but actually, you're right. So, we can do you want to. No, no, you can. Run. Oh, I can. Run. Okay. <laughs> Just another option. Yeah, you it's can either let it yes. set first and then put it in the jar, yes. or you. Absolutely. You can do it all at once. Yes. Yes. Wow, it looks yummy, Severine. But for me, um, I like it to have it a bit uh, thicker. So, that's yeah. why I'm using yogurt first instead of. of, of um, a milk okay. uh, and that's it. And I just. And there you go. Good to go. Take away. Yes. Any time of day. Brilliant. Absolutely. Very good. Okay, so guys, some, something very easy to try at home. Okay, so Severin, now we're going to have some questions from our viewers for okay. you. Okay, and the first one is, I'm trying to be more skin healthy and want to know which foods are best for my skin. I know nuts are supposed to be very good, but I'm allergic. Is there anything else you would recommend? Yes, there is a lot that can be done, luckily. Okay. It's very unfortunate about the, the nut allergy, but the first thing to have a good skin is to drink enough water. 
Mm. And I know it's really hard in winter because we don't feel like drinking naturally. And when we drink, we, drink, we tend to drink hot, food, uh, hot drinks yeah. like coffee and tea. Mm. And that's really dehydrating on top of it. So hydration is the first one. Second one is um, having some good fats. Okay. So nuts are some of the good ones, but omega-3 fats, you know, the oily fish. Yes. Yeah. You know, the sardine, mackerel and so on. That, that uh, would be a very good start. Next, the skin is uh, very healthy when it has a lot of collagen, you know, okay. well, that's yeah. a protein that makes it strong and elastic. And the um, vitamin that really helps with that is vitamin C. So you will have a lot oh. of citrus fruit like lemon mm. or um, a lemon or oranges, uh, lime, yeah. oranges, but also uh, strawberries, which are probably a bit expensive for the season. But red peppers are, are also really oh, yeah. high in, um, in vitamin C. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, vitamin A and vitamin E, because they are both antioxidants. Mm. Vitamin A is typically the, yellow, uh, the orange um, vegetables like carrots and sweet potatoes and vitamin E is um, avocado. Okay, that I love as well. Yeah. Most people love avocado and it's really rich in vitamin E so yeah, okay. that's a good Great thing. For the skin. Okay, wonderful. Next question. What are macronutrients? Everyone keeps telling me I should count my macros and not my calories, but I have no idea what those even are. <laughs> okay, so macronutrients is um, the big groups of food. So typically the protein, the carbohydrates, and the fats. So uh, under proteins, okay. you've got the essential amino acids and the non-essential. So it's all the different uh, um, amino acid that makes up protein basically. Yeah. Then in the carb carbohydrates, you've got um, the starchy carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So that's typically the one that once they get digested, turns into sugar, sugar. Mm -hmm. or the non-starchy one or fibrous, which are more um, water and fibrous. Typically okay. all the greenish thing, all the leaves, all uh, asparagus and so on, that would be a non-starchy vegetable. Okay. In the labels, it doesn't say starchy or non-starchy, it says fibers or sugar. Okay. And the last but not least, the fats. So the fats, there are pl plenty of different fats. You've got the essential fatty acids, omega-3, omega-6, omega-9. That's the, they are essential because the body can't make them up from different, um, components so we have mm. to get it from food but we've got also the saturated fat from the meat or animal products and the trans fat which were created by man and is a real, yeah, real disaster good. for our health yeah. so that's globally the, the macronutrients and that's typically what we would find on the food labels okay now um, the relationship between macronutrients and calories come from the fact that each gram of uh, protein or carbohydrates uh, is worth four calories and each gram of fat is worth nine calories. So that's how you found the calories. Okay. So, so now, do, you, do you think it's better than to count? Yeah, back to yeah. the question. I don't know what the main goal of this uh, viewer okay, yeah. is. Mm -hmm. If it's weight loss, just forget about counting calories. It doesn't work. In the long term, it doesn't work. It, everything works short term, but in the long term, it won't work. Mm -hmm. uh, counting, counting macronutrients is probably better because it means that they're watching their diet, but it also means like weighing everything. And that's con time consuming. And we often lose interest very yeah. early. On. Yeah. And also it doesn't say, it says about quantity but not the quality because essentially what making our body function is all the vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients. And that's not the macronutrients but the micronutrients. Okay. That's a different question. Wow, so okay, so this person that now wants to, anyway, they're not saying even if they want to, yes. to lose weight, but anyway. Okay, so thank you for clarifying that. Yes. <laughs> so don't count about calories and don't count mac macronutrients <laughs> or anything. Okay, last question for today. My husband has been diagnosed with gout and I'm struggling to find something to cook for him. What are some gout funny recipes that you would recommend? Yeah, I'm very sorry about your husband. I know it's very painful, so I hope, I hope everything is under control. The problem with gout is um, it's triggered by um, purine rich foods and purine is one of the building block of DNA, which means that it's every protein. Oh wow. And that's why it's really hard to find good foods for people suffering mm. from gut. But luckily you've got foods really high in purine, which are the ones typically to avoid. And we're talking uh, oily fish, we're talking okay. mussels, we're talking uh, beans and legumes, and we're talking a few vegetables, which are mushroom, asparagus, cauliflower, and the last one is spinach. Okay. So that's the one to avoid. Then you've got some medium content like uh, meat, 
Oh, sorry, I forgot about beer. Okay. Beer and alcohol is like a big no-no. Big no-no, okay. But for most uh, conditions, anyway, it's a no-no. Mm -hmm. uh, then you've got the medium one, and what we want to concentrate on for the question is the low one. So that would be all the dairy products, that would be eggs, that would be all the fruits and vegetables that I, have not, that I haven't mentioned before, yeah. okay. grains, but the refined one. So mm -hmm. with grain, you can have pasta, you can have, um, I want to say pizza, you can have bread, you can have cereals and nuts. Okay. So example of recipes, typically you can have like pasta with lots of vegetable and a bit of parmesan for protein, or you can have an omelette. Okay. I had to say omelette. And yeah. I haven't been able to find one vegetable that is not good with omelettes. So that's a good thing, yeah. and, and a side salad. And, and you can do a salad with quinoa, and again, lots of vegetables, uh, with some cheese as protein, or boiled eggs. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some options. It's, it's much more difficult, I understand, but it's possible. It's possible, okay. Severine, thank you so much. Thank and you. And we'll see you again next time. And everyone, if you have a question for one of our nutritionists, all you need to do is email us on nutrition at chrissybshow.tv and if you'd like to know more about Severin, she's on our website, all her details are there. You can visit our website chrissybshow.tv and her details are, or well, you can get the link to her details on our homepage. Well don't go away because after the break we have some great fitness demonstrations that will fire your endorphins and get you feeling better and I give you some tips on how to support someone through sexual violence and things that you shouldn't say and things that you should say. But first, what percentage of those raped know their rapist? Is it A, 20%, B, 50% or C, 90%? Find out the answer after this break. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show everyone, where today we've been talking all about sexual abuse. Now, before the break, I asked you what percentage of those raped know their rapist? Is it A, 20%, B, 50% or C, 90%? The answer is 90% according to Rape Crisis. Now, exercise is an excellent outlet for stress and here is Faye Jejede giving us a simple workout you can do to let off some pressure. Hey there everyone, thank you so much for joining me in today's fitness segment. Now today I'm going to be taking you through a wonderful workout all to do with the plank, okay? So we're going to be doing the plank and we're going to be doing lots of different variations on the plank, okay? So all you need is a mat and have a bottle of water to hand so you can rest and stop anytime you want to. Okay, let's go down. We're going to start first by being on our knees, as so, L shape. Make sure that everything is nice and flat in a nice L shape. Your back is flat and you're like this. Now come onto your elbow. This is the beginner's plank. From here, this is what I want you to do. I want you to lean forward as so. And now your abs is what's going to start to do the work. This is where the contraction starts, okay? So most people tend to stay here like this with their bum in the air. So don't have your bum in the air. Lean forward and hold it there for a couple of seconds. So let's do 10, okay? And if you're new to the plank work, you might find yourself wobbling a little bit, but don't worry, you will get better. Excellent, okay, good. Now, number two, back to the beginning, as so, tuck your toes under, okay? And come full up, like this, and lean forward again, like we did with the first exercise. So this is number two with your plank variation. I'm feeling this already. My abs are killing. So hold it there. Remember, don't stick your bum in the air. Keep it flat, your back flat and neutral. Excellent. Perfect, good, let's stop. And now we're gonna do exercise number three. So now, I've shown you one, I've shown you two. Now the third one, it's gonna be a little bit harder, I promise, but it's gonna be doable and it's manageable. So you're gonna to have to be moving around. Tuck those toes under, come fully on your arms like this, so you're nice and you're long, and then we're gonna walk across. So, like so, and we're moving our feet and arms, and then we're going back, like so, okay? Let's speed it up. Now take your time if you're new to this, and then, if you are, these are called lateral walk, the plank. You can 
Take it slow, as I said, if you're new. Excellent, keep going. Perfect, give me one on each side. Take your time, don't rush. Excellent. And walk it back to the middle. And hold it there for three, two, one. Well done. Whew. Come down onto your knees. Give yourself a full stretch. And there you have it. That was your plank variation workout complete. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me today. Faye Jagaday here on The Chrissy B Show. Take care and I'll catch up with you again soon. Bye. So now it's time for a few pointers uh, courtesy of mentalhealthmatters.com and there are some do's and don'ts, uh, simple things of to say and things not to say to a victim of abuse. So for example, do think about saying some of the following statements. So I'm here for you if you want to talk to me more about this or I'm sorry that you had to go through this. You can also say you're a survivor and that's important to remember. Also, I'm glad that you're brave and speaking about this. And also, thank you for confiding in me. I'm glad that you trust me enough because, you know, it really does take a lot for someone to actually open up and talk about something like this. Something else that you can say is, can I get you anything to make you more comfortable right now? So as you can see, all of these statements are very supportive and they're also very positive. They're not casting any blame. They're not traumatizing. and. It gives a more positive vibe to a very kind of, well, a very negative situation. So now, now time for some things that you should avoid saying. And these kind of statements are very unsupportive. So for example, why didn't you try to run away? Why can't you just get over it? <laughs> Unfortunately, these are statements that have been said to people. Also, you should have done something differently. Or even worse, I don't think I believe you. So. This actually does happen a lot to people. Um, also, another thing that you can actually avoid saying is, and this is a big one, and I know it's been in the media and everything, maybe if you weren't wearing what you were, it wouldn't have happened. Also statements like, maybe it was your fault. So as you can see, all these statements are very, very blaming, and they do put undue blame on the victim who did nothing wrong. So it's important that if maybe these kind of thoughts are coming to you first. The website is actually saying that maybe you should educate yourself on sexual abuse and how victims are made to believe that their assault or abuse was something that they did to themselves, which is actually very, a very, very wrong and, and damaging thing. So in general, don't cast doubt on the situation. And even in a situation where you maybe have your doubts, just keep them to yourself. Remember that it's always important to give even alleged victims support during their time of need. So other things that you can actually help with, um, just, just so you know how to deal with certain situations, it's important not to pressure victims. So sexual abuse victims are feeling very vulnerable and if you try and put too much pressure on them and say to them, you know, you have to report the, this abuse, you have to go to the police, it can actually scare them and not make them feel very safe to actually confide in you in the first place. Now you can suggest for them to go to the police, but don't force, never force an abuse victim into anything they don't want to do. So again, suggest going to the authorities if the crime is ongoing or maybe, you know, you, the, the person is still confiding in you. So just always be supportive. Something else that you can do actually is to offer to go with them, maybe to the police. You can offer to maybe go to their first therapy session, things like that, or even um, actually suggest that they join some kind of group to help them as well. So just remember that sexual abuse is very isolating for the victim. So making them feel safe and giving them the, su the support that they need is really, really vital. But as always, as we always say on this program, you know, dealing with these kind of things can be very difficult, especially if this has happened to a family member. So make sure that you also get the support that you need. You know your limits, if it's getting too much for you, if it's causing you too much stress and you can't handle it, you, you might need to take a step back and actually look for other avenues to help this person. Well, everyone, I hope this program has helped you today in some way. And if you have a story that you would like to share, please do get in touch with us. Maybe you have some comments about today's program and would like to share your views. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us on info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet us at chrissybshow or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Until next time, bye for now.